Alan from San Diego, California writes, Hey Paul, I've treated my listening room with bass traps, wall panels, and diffusers, and while it definitely helped tame echoes and standing waves, I'm starting to feel like I may have gone too far. The room sounds dry, almost uh, too controlled, and I miss some of the natural liveliness that used to be there. Is there such a thing as over-treating a room? How do I know when I've passed the sweet spot and moved into the realm of lifeless sound? Should I pull some treatment back, or is this just part of adjusting to a more accurate space? Obviously, hard for me to tell you whether you have or haven't, but is it possible? Oh, good golly, yes. Over the years, I have seen so many overly damped rooms, and you can walk into one of those rooms. I can hear it almost instantly. It's like all the life has been sucked out of the room. So one of the easiest things I do is when I walk into a room, I'm normally blabbering on about this or that, right? And as I talk, I listen to the naturalness of my voice. It should sound natural. And wow, if you've ever been in an overdamped room, you'll hear it if you're paying attention. Now, a lot of people they don't pay attention, but if you do pay attention, you'll hear it as overdamped. So when we built this room, you notice we have spaces where there's just plain wall. We have spaces, not many of them, where there's this red acoustic absorbers, right? So these absorbers are dead. If you, you know, if you really get up here, you can hear in my voice, the difference in my voice, as opposed to the difference in my voice here. Hear that difference? And then hear that difference? It's just, it's like muffled. And it's the combination of those absorption, diffusion, and bare wall that really makes a room come alive without having too many echoes. And it's, it's an art. Hey, I've done this for 50 years. You know how many rooms I've built? How many rooms that I've built that sucked? <laughs> you don't want to know. Uh, I remember... Gosh, there's a, I don't know if I put that in 99. 99% true is my memoirs. If, if you're ever interested in reading anything about me, go to Amazon and look up 99% true. And it, it's kind of funny. I, I had fun writing it. I, and then I, quite a few people have read it and have told me they enjoyed reading it. So anyway, I don't know if I told this story or not, but I had gone into a fellow's entire floor in an apartment complex in Taiwan where he had a pair of Genesis 1s, that, the giant four-column loudspeakers that we made at Genesis that were kind of, uh, not copies, but they were very much like the Infinity IRS 5s. And those speakers normally just took over the room and sounded great. When I went there, he was pretty unhappy with the sound. And this guy had a forest. I mean, never seen anything like it. This entire place had a forest full of diffusers and traps. And I was like, whoa, you know, jaw dropping moment as I walked in. And I, so I sit down and listen to it. And it was eh, not very good. And he wasn't happy. He became even more unhappy when I announced to him, you know what, we're going to start over. He had an assistant. I said, if it's okay, we're going to take all of this stuff and get it out of the room. And he was like, oh, no, I mean, spent years, you know, testing. Anyway, I finally convinced him, the only thing I can do, I, I can't just tweak this. I got to take it all out. He was horrified, and we took it all out of the room. Then it sounded very echoey, and bit by bit, we put it in, listened, put it in, listened, moved, the, until, and I, I knew immediately by just talking that things were better, and we got it to the point where he was in tears listening to how good it sounded, but it, it was just so overly done that it was awful. So yes, absolutely you can. Take your time, do what we do with these 
we just set these up and moved them around, listened, figured out what spaces had to be bare and how it all worked. And you'll get there. All right? All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank <music> you.